Hello and welcome back to XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. My name is Saiken and today we're continuing the infamous Rise of the Robots campaign where we're trying to beat the game on Legendary Iron Man difficulty with only psionically active characters and a couple of sparks. And uh, to be honest, we are going to do a protect the device mission because I hate those and in order to overcome your fears, you sometimes gotta face what you do not like at all. So I'm going to deliberately put myself into a kind of disadvantageous position here. Also, as mentioned, we're going to uh, not take any of uh, the top dog contenders for the last mission. So all of them are out for now, which means we're left with a semi broken spark, uh, Quartus and Quintus. We got a psionically active character, Quick Feet. And the rest is, as always, going to come from our valiant roster of rookies, XQS6 and the True Rebel being two of them. And let's take a good look whom else we're taking. Probably VDM. Yeah, why not? He hasn't been on a mission for a while. Very good. So let's get enough mimic beacons going we got a good gun a good gun a good gun we even got a nicely looking heavy armor here with a shredder gun you know what might as well give him the hellfire projector so that he has the fire and these guys here will rock the shredder guns because they do have um, talents the rainmaker talent to just make it more impactful as for quick feet how about we're giving him blue screen rounds? That's a good idea. And how about on top of uh, that, an uh, well, EMP grenade would be the worst choice. And we could also, I mean, we have plenty, plenty of money. What have we not seen within this campaign so far? something hmm. not really don't need it I mean we could give him a med kit but that's almost wasteful on him I like the idea of an EMP grenade yeah we don't we, we don't want to even entertain the idea of him getting shot shut down so yeah you know what we're going with the proximity mine because why not We'll probably not have the strength to throw it very far, but nonetheless, that's a good idea. Oh, I do have an idea. Oh, 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 I do have an idea. Much better. We're going to give him the serpent suit, deck him out really well, and therefore he uh, has the nice little uh, ice beam. Yeah, that's it. Okay, wonderful. Superior repeater, yes please. We got some advanced expanded magazine, yes please. And an advanced scope, wonderful. Got a new well built out weapon and let's give him also some superior aim. So yeah, he's actually a pretty well rounded soldier now. We got enough blue screen rounds to kill an entire platoon of robots. And the only question now is, are we going to make it uh, to the device fast enough or will the device be destroyed? That's really what will uh, define whether or not this here is going to be a perfect run. All right, let's go. All right, protect that device it is. Let's get this mission rolling. So the problem with protect the device missions is, and many of you will know my stance on these missions, they are just incredibly tedious to play through. The majority of times you will lose them without you even having a chance to actually interact properly. The device is not scaling very well in hit points and if there is a, a substantial threat uh, from standing right next to it, such as a sector pod, well, the sector port is usually a bad example. They won't necessarily take shots very often. But if there is a majorly damaging enemy standing next to it, such as an Andromedon with a really, really high damage gun, it can take only as little as three rounds to completely obliterate uh, the entire device. And then there is nothing left to protect. You just lost. GG. 
And yeah, that's really the frustrating part. We're sprinting, therefore, uh, to get to our target as fast as humanly possible. I'm even giving up high ground here. Everybody double moved. And did I just mention the Andromedon with its nasty, super hardcore gun? Yeah. Feindliche Ziel in Sicht. Wow. Okay, well, we got no other choice than to engage. Quite literally, no other choice than to engage. The good thing about it is we got a hellfire protector a projector and i want to optimize just our movement to be honest we need to get as close to the target as possible and when starting this here we should be good to go we're burning both of them and at the same time we're we're starting off the encounter on the other side so let's try that Very nice hit, by the way. All right. Got this guy burning. My trigger hunter, because that pack is officially now revealed. Nope, it does not trigger hunter. Well, is what it is, right? Okay. Good. We can jump back. We could jump to the front, but that would very likely trigger that entire pack there. Not sure if we want to go and do that. That would almost be like poking the bear uh, right into the eye. Moving to position. Like literally jumping there. Yeah, I think we could take them. Uh, what I am looking for is who of the two would be the better one to use to use their overdrive now. Yeah, that by far spear is the better one. So let's overdrive. Let's start with priest. That's a single hit, very nice. Let's continue and shred this guy. It's another hit, again, very nice. Let's kill the purifier. Or miss a 90% shot. Alright, I was sort of hoping that the explosion might take more of uh, the cover away, which was unfortunately not the case. Got another Void Rift, which nicely could be placed here to solve a problem. We could use Stasis and Void Rift to basically uh, solve both of the problems with a Psionic Solution. At my trigger. Ah, I did not. I would have had a plan B if it would have triggered. There we go. Very nice hit. That's good. Almost done. Okay, so what we could do is we could move to here and essentially kill this guy. Do we have a repeater? Yes, uh, stock. Uh, we don't have one, but we do have a repeater. So yeah, that could be one option. Don't want to use mind control yet. 
still got the option to kind of pull ourselves up here. So we're actually standing quite securely. I don't want to use stasis yet. I want to keep that one. It's our chance to get rid of these guys 50 50. Do we really want to use the teamwork yet? Hmm. I don't know. I, probably a little bit too early. 3 to 6 will not kill this guy. 100% of time it will kill this guy though and we could lose a lot of momentum if uh, the priests are allowed to stasis so I'm not fine with that which kind of brings us to the option to stasis and then right afterwards uh, void rift yeah let's do that that way we're Making sure that there is no mind control or stasis on this side. Might not be the most satisfying stasis ever, but it is fine. We can use the Void Rift to kill this guy. There we go. Nice one. He's burning, so he can't use his Psy abilities. Might as well give him a shot and save our teamwork for a bit later all right sustenance still works despite him burning but burning unfortunately afterwards kills him so too bad buddy we're down 20. quite substantial hit And that's a problem. Too many hit points that are now coming in. Alright. A lot of hit points that are now coming in. I want to make sure we're not triggering anybody over there. Yeah, it's unfortunately how it goes sometimes. Fifty-fifty to immediately kill this guy, which I think is a fair chance. I want to get rid of him right away because losing um, momentum due to a psionic bomb uh, would be pretty impactful for us at this point domination could get either of uh, these guys which wouldn't be the worst to be honest um, so let's say we were going to go to here Hmm. Hmm. I like the aggressiveness of it. At the same time, we're going to lose line of sight, so not the best choice to actually do that. We can and probably should very much consider just shredding the living hell out of the, these three here. Yeah, I think it's the right time to overdrive and use some of our cooldowns. Since the shredding is just too good, uh, we should definitely continue with doing it. I'll keep a Mimic Beacon as a means to, um, to have kind of a last resort. I'm hearing stomps in the back, which tells me that there might be a sector pot. Nice little hit. And I want to get rid of the Andromedon. Uh. 
That is unfortunate. Very unfortunate. Okay, that could be a mimic beacon if needed. Reloading here. here and we could have that interesting kind of three for one deal at the expense of using the second shredder gun not sure if we want to do that yet moving. instead moving over here priest is still a big concern we have uh, stock yeah, advanced stock, so that's 100% kill, or in that case, putting him into stasis, which is fine. All right, let me think. Yeah, we're probably going to do the aggressive move. Problem is, if I position myself over here, I'm pretty close. Well, we do have a Mimic Beacon, so might not be the end of the world. Moving over here would not be close enough for the Frost uh, Bite. We got him as Mimic Beacon. Well, that's an insurance for us. And we're running out of options. I hate to do it, uh, but I think we're going to use. Ah, is it is it appropriate? I mean, we would get all three of them. That's great. Okay, no problem. Um, but at the same time, we have no more cover removal afterwards, and there's there are still some packs to go. So. Might as well more prudent. Just kill the sectoid and just be done with it. Let's make that decision in a second. We're going to use another cooldown, which is frostbite. There we go. We're going to save this guy for next round. And whilst we're at it, let's you take the domination. I really would like to get that Andromedon. Well, the game really doesn't care <clears throat> what I do or do not want. Fair enough. Going to eliminate as many enemies uh, from the field as possible. And we're then simply going to do what I mentioned that we would be doing, which is Mimic Beginning. Yeah, that was somewhat foreseeable. There are no civilians down here. So absolutely no surprise that we're going to run into a faceless one. Yeah, worst thing that could happen is we're going to see a kind of a stasis. But yeah, that guy just moved back, takes a sh uh, shot, and that's pretty much it. Yeah, that's a problem. We're down to uh, 19. And luckily for us, we sort of saved the shredding ammunition. All right, cool or not so cool. 
depending uh, on which side you are playing on. If you're playing on uh, XCOM side, it's actually not really cool because uh, the enemy has a very, very, very solid uh, stance uh, here. Got a couple of uh, good options available though. But we're pretty deep in enemy uh, territory, let's uh, put it that way. So now it's time to really clean up. Good. Moving over here to free up that valuable high ground spot. Closing on target position now. We're close. Then who else could move up there? Yeah, I think we got to take the high ground here. Stop. Gotta deal with this guy. Gotta deal with a lot of them, so quite frankly, we'll need to blow all of our cooldowns that are available at this point. This here would be a fantastic hit for killing two and essentially removing a lot of uh, the enemies. So we don't need to reload, I'll just stay where we are. That's a pretty solid hit. Okay. So. What we could do here is we could take a nice little flanking position alternatively over here. And take shots, right? Right. This guy is still a big, a big problem for us. <laughs> this is an easy kill. We got one more Mimic Beacon, if I'm not mistaken. Well, two. No, one. One more Mimic Beacon. So that will bring us through the round. Stun Lance has a high priority. Unfortunately, the shield bearer is a problem. Sector pot goes without saying that that is a problem. Could start to kind of further our our shots onto the sector pot. Probably should deal with this guy because if he jumps up, he's going to slash. Uh, people will fall down and will lose cover. So the faceless one is a real threat as well. Not very good odds to hit. I would need the high ground with the rookie, but we just can't get it. What we can get is a flanking position, and that's as good as it gets for us. So I'll take it. We gotta clean up uh, the field here first and foremost. So that's one down. Going to hand over teamwork just to increase our action economy further. Now it's time for the faceless one. Okay, no good, but at least some damage. Let we not kill it. Damn it with 2 HP. Very, very unfortunate. Yeah, we can't let it stand with only 2 HP. I 
I'd love to kill the Andromedon, but the faceless one is probably the more urgent issue. Alright, there we go. It's one down. Elite Lancer. And we're down to a single Mimic Beacon. So how do we do that? We could place him here. I'd like to place him out of line of sight of these guys. Probably sort of over here. Maybe right in front here. Yeah. Yeah, over here is good because that'll spark interest of both of them. Will we start moving into full cover? And let's mimic beacon over here. It's too far away for um, the Andromedon to reach. Okay, well, it's not bad. Um, if he moves a lot, uh, that means he's wasting his actions. All right. Perfect. Not so perfect, um, because that Andromedon now will run wild. And it's going to hurt. Luckily, we got we have dodge on uh, the character and um, uh, a means to survive, so it was not threatening a deadly shot. But we got to deal with this guy. Got to deal with a lot of guys. We got stasis back, and the question now is how to deal most efficiently uh, with uh, these threats. We're taking the Andromedon out because, believe it or not, the sector pod um, is easier to take down. Um, Andromedon is in cover and is not a uh, mechanical unit yet. All right, spear. Uh, needs to get a tiny bit further away question is where this guy has a nasty position on us but I think we're overall fine might as well position ourselves in high ground where we belong continuing to shred very nice well 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 good round for I suppose a reload and a focus on the sector pod. Make sure that this guy here takes all the heat that we do have available for it. Move all the way over here. That's probably not good to get a bit away. No fantastic spots, only mediocre ones. Very nice hit. And I think True Rebel also too close yet. Let's put him over here. Another full cover. And there's the kill. Hundred percent, eighty percent. Yeah, we can't fully kill someone, and this will not be a full uh, kill either. But what we can do is we can trick the AI because this guy here cannot climb stairs. <laughs> 
sneaky, sneaky little psycho. Alright, and we're kind of prepping him. So that we can kill him next turn. He's now going to use his um, shield. That's fine. Probably a grenade. No. Oh, look at that. Clever. But not clever enough. Well, maybe, maybe he was clever enough, actually. Maybe he was clever enough after all. That was a pretty smart move. I have not foreseen that. He was actually having enough movement to go all the way around and we didn't block off uh, the other side. Yep, shame on me. Um, but let's put it that way. That is not the typical situation where you usually find yourself. So... That was an interesting one. And he fell down and killed his friend, thus also removing all of the shields. On the other hand, we're now having kind of that situation where we are well exposed with relatively low hit points. Let's get the shell down. Nicely done, that's one solid kill. BDM. Um, can't move him without exposing him. Yeah, we gotta deal with the Andro with the other and Andromedon. Can we freeze him one more round? Anything? We can deal with the purifier, okay. Well. This here is a prop he was problematic and drummed on uh, the entire fight. I bet you he was even a problematic Andromedon when he was growing up. Middle school. And he was always the guy in class that was disturbing. Was hoping for an execute. Gotta commit fully onto this guy. But by that way, uh, by that we're like exposing ourselves onto the other side. Of course, we don't want to do. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That is with maximum damage. That is level. We now got an acid burn. Got ourselves an advanced hair trigger. Let's set this guy here up for a kill. I want to be a bit efficient. Um, that's the only one that our rookie here, excuse 6 can see. Might as well kill him and explode. There we go, with the explosion we also got some extra damage against the Andromedon, so that was the efficient play there. Worked out like I thought, but that is still pretty punishing. Got enough hit points to withstand this guy for one round. So we're probably going to tank him, quote unquote. Nice little hit. We'll move up. That's probably suicidal. Yeah, we we'll, would take too much damage. What we could do is a little trick. That's a bit of a cheeky play now, but you gotta play with everything available if everything is on the line, right? Let's kill this guy. There we go. 
that neutralizes the immediate threat. And since we're now left exposed, I'm just going to evac him. See you later, alligator. Uh, reduces our overall combat force by one, but um, that also means we're not going to die. And it gives you a little trick for your games if you're ever finding yourself in such a situation. Yeah, he couldn't really figure out how to how to engage on us, which is fine. I'm not complaining about that. Moving up, blue screen rounds should make really short process of this guy. Looks are doing their job. Very nice. We're driving. And that puts an end to a pretty, I would say, Thuric victory type of mission where we were forced to run in. If you, are, if you want to use, uh, yourself, Psycho, why didn't you just play more carefully? The whole thing had 19 hit points left, so it was effectively one round from almost being destroyed. So I got, I, the, the only way to get them off of here is to basically get them onto us. In fighting a sector port, four adds, uh, two Andromedons, uh, a Psy Priest, and I think we have the one Andromedon, each Andromedon was accompanied by a single ad. Yeah, one was Codex and one was another one. So that's like what, 10 enemies uh, or 11 enemies out of uh, the 17 in one go. On top of which, you fight a Sectopod and two Andromedons. That's just a lot of hit points to chew through, and no matter how well you're doing, we only had like two Mimic Beacons and one Stasis, and that's about it. Like, that was our crowd control, right? And there's no, like, major um, uh, play with, uh, with the uh, ter um, terrain that was possible. The only mistake that I could have arguably done uh, better was the placement on the high ground because I underestimated just how far the Andromedon could uh, move, the shell of the Andromedon. But yeah, that was a very specific uh, one. Um, they usually have problems with even climbing ladders, let alone uh, with hitting on high ground. So interesting mission. I hope uh, well worth your time because it was kind of a non-standard mission. Nonetheless, we haven't lost anyone and the streak continues and we're back at camp let's take a look cannot promote anyone other than the spark and quintus certainly has earned his or its promotion um we're going with rainmaker just because it worked so super well we got some serious wounds on spear here and um, but overall we did well Overall, we did quite well. Got some extra intel that we do not need. And the only thing that we now want to remind ourselves was improve beam weapons because we're greedy. And then that is pretty much it. Good. Let's do a bit of a heal faster type of scanning. Well, you got so much info, guys. Good. Next mech is receiving repairs. And Renvin has Stasis uh, Shield trained up. I don't think that we can realistically... Ooh, Void Rift. That's nice. But we're probably not going to... Uh, get that on him in time. We're okay. We don't need to have a perfect team on Legendary, uh, specifically the last mission. If you know what you're doing, it is not that difficult. Um, the Warlock's Rifle, indeed, we wanted to uh, research it because it has the automatic crit. And then I think we're done done. 
Yeah, I got a Hellfire Projector, but it's not what we're looking for. Our and that is it. Disrupt the rifle. Yes, thank you. No need the weapons here. I'll see that work Let's engineer and build our items. I think. Wrath uh, suit. Um, we're okay. We got everything uh, built up. No need to build anything else. In terms of upgrades, really. Our research is progressing as expected, Commander. Hey, build items, weapons. No, that looks good. Yeah, the Warlock rifle already starts at highest upgrade. Just wanted to make sure that we're not forgetting about oh. anything. That's good. Um, Another mimic beacon uh, just for shits and giggles. And that brings us to our final oh. mission. In terms of loadout, let's prepare for that real quick. Uh, we're going to use Hogbite for the uh, first mission and for the very last mission, we're going to use Renvan um, with a uh, no, correct with a correct um, layout. Let me shortly suggest to give him some superior. Um, some superior aim. Yep, superior perception, that's 16, very good. So his aim is pretty boosted up. Um, in terms of weapon upgrades, I would like to give him the disruptor rifle which is just a slick piece of armor uh, and uh, a slick piece of tech. He will do very well with that. And we got a Mimic Beacon plus a Shredstorm Cannon. Cool, that works well. I'm wondering, mm, two screen rounds, not really needed. He will be the one um, since the uh, weapon is hit, uh, critting against psionically active characters. He will actually be the one like shooting on uh, psionically active characters. the That's the one Psy Operative that we're taking with us. Roby is uh, the second Psy Operative. Icarus suit, uh, decked out, very nice. Uh, plasma rifle, Mimic Beacon, blue screen rounds. Boy, oh boy, he is ready to bring the pain. That is one ready mofo. And he got even more aim on top of it. So yeah, that is going to hurt. Uh, both of them alone could solo the last mission. We're going to bring Magister uh, with us. Uh, let's uh, take a look here as well. Superior speed, uh, definitely advisable for them. We're going to give it a mind shield uh, simply because then they will be immune to literally everything. And that is all they need. That's really how simple the... Um, the Templar classes. If you know what you're doing, that is fantastic with them. Uh, we got Primo, uh, Primus here, um, Superior Expanded Magazine, Superior Scope. Yep, pretty simple to um, outfit him. Superior Stock. Nah, I don't like that. No, 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 no. We're past that point. We are past that point. Um, let's go to one of the other mechs. I think one of you guys had a weapon that was superior scope, superior autoloader. Mm. Nah, I like the superior scope, but I don't like the superior autoloader. And we got like what? Damn. Okay. Whatever. We're going in uh, with only an advanced scope that's okay plus superior expanded magazine and finally dagger with the weapon upgrade superior scope superior expanded magazine uh, that looks great so we got three mechs one templar two psi operatives and the other mission will be hogbite uh, mm, we're going to put in storm so it's double templar action and we're going to use one other spark titan here for instance um, Quintus, uh, who could help them. Double uh, Templar plus Spark, 
That sounds like an interesting combination. We haven't played that yet. And that brings us to the end of today's episode. Thank you so much for watching. We're going to head right into the final mission after that. And see you later, alligator. Bye-bye.